is a great way to approach kids with topics that may seem a little difficult to bring up in discussion. And when it comes to social justice in America, there are so many children's books that can help you talk with your little ones about it. Okay, today we have help from the San Antonio Public Library and its new Overdrive collection available on ebooks, audiobooks, and more. So here are five books on that list. First one, A Good Kind of Trouble. This book is about friendship, family, and standing up for what's right. Story centers around a 12 year old girl, Shayla, who's facing protests while in middle school and forced to choose sides while trying to do the right thing. You can borrow the book, uh, the audiobook online right now. Soldier for Equality. This is a story of a Mexican-American war hero who lived in the early 20th century. He and his family experienced prejudice because of their Mexican heritage. He became part of the intelligence office in Europe, but despite his hard work and intellect, he didn't receive credit for his contributions, ultimately leading to his creation of the League of United Latin American Citizens, or LULAC. Ghost Boys. Now, this is a story about a boy who was killed by a police officer who mistook his toy gun for a real gun. He comes back as a ghost and meets other ghosts who help him realize that only the living can actually make the world a better place. Hair Love. The character in this one, Zuri, has hair with a mind of its own. This book is described as tender and empowering. Zuri, a little girl, knows her hair is beautiful, but when her dad has to style it for a special occasion, he has a lot to learn. This story is an ode to loving your natural hair and also a celebration of daddies and daughters everywhere. Amina's Voice is a Washington Post best children's book of 2017, and this is about a Pakistani-American Muslim girl who struggles to stay true to her family's vibrant culture while blending in at school. Now, after tragedy strikes her community, Amina's highlights how one girl's voice Voice can help bring diverse, a diverse community together. There are many more to choose from on the San Antonio Public Library's database. Just head to salive.com and you know what to do. Click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Alrighty, and from children's books to something for the grown-ups. Back in January, we met Hezekiah Watkins. Now, he was one of the youngest freedom riders who set out to desegregate buses and bus stations in the South. And his book, Pushing Forward, tells that story. Our Jen Tobias Trusky sat with Hezekiah and a group of Freedom Riders earlier this year. We are here at Designer Glitz and Glamour Spa and Salon, and we're about to talk to some of the Freedom Riders who made such an impact on the civil rights movement. One of the things that many of us who were involved in the movement have been saying for years and trying to impress upon people not to underestimate, and that is do not take the gains that we've made for granted. On this special day, we celebrate our freedom and continue to focus on change for the better. If we can continue raising the awareness, I say, but keeping this history alive and uh, uh, encouraging our young people to get involved, don't just sit back and you know watch things happen that you know are wrong. For these five freedom riders, just teens back in the 60s, making such an impact on history wasn't something they even thought about. All they knew is that they wanted to end segregation. I was 13 years of age, going to jail and getting out and going back to play. But after getting out and began to realize the impact that I had for that short period of time and the impact that I had on the community, as many may know, the Freedom Riders were met with angry protesters and violence almost everywhere they went in the South, including sit-ins at segregated lunch counters. My whole thing was, how can you treat someone that's as much a human being as you are? How can you treat them like that because of the color of their skin? You couldn't understand it. There was this um, restaurant that we used to go and on one side it was for blacks and we only had a jukebox and a couple of uh, booths and, and there was a window there that we used to have to ring the bell, right? Remember that? <laughs> but while you're standing there ringing that bell, you could see the other side which was larger, had tables, white tablecloths, you know, they were um, serving dinner to whites. But when the movement started, my, my greatest pleasure was that 
you know, we went on that side and we were able to sit there. They did not serve us, you know, and then eventually they would start, you know, they would ask us to leave and then they would start pushing us out. And one thing people may not even realize is that being arrested for these civil rights protest also meant that jail record followed them in the future for their careers. When I first started working for the federal government in 1967 and filled out my paperwork and it said, have you ever committed a crime? And I checked no. So there was you know, no other question following that that I had to amplify my answer. So of course I had to be fingerprinted and when the fingerprint report came back, I was called to the personnel office. All five agree education is key for the younger generations to never forget the sacrifices made for freedom. You know, we've noticed changes in the transportation in the educational system with the desegregation of schools. We, we stress to young people the price, the struggle that people have paid to give you the opportunity to get the kind of education that you need to advance yourself. All right, still ahead, avoiding the summer slump, how to keep kids learning over the summer break with some fun ideas to keep their attention. And it's a scary new illness in children related to COVID-19. University Children's Health tells us what symptoms to watch out for. That's next on SA Live. One of the comforts we've been able to take during the pandemic was that children were less likely to experience the serious symptoms of COVID-19. But now healthcare providers are seeing something disturbing. It's called MISC. Dr. Robert Sanders with University Health Systems Petty Express Urgent Care Downtown joins us today to tell us more about this newly discovered inflammatory syndrome. Good afternoon, doctor. Good afternoon, Fiona. Thanks for having us again. Of course. What is MISC? The lot of letters, it's a, it's a big scary word, a uh, big scary phrase I would say. It's called multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. Um, the lucky thing about this whole deal is that it's extremely rare uh, and we do not see it a lot, but it is uh, one of these new complications that we're seeing from COVID. How much of a danger is this to children? It can be very dangerous and very, very rarely life-threatening. The really good thing about this though is that the amount of children that get severely sick from this or ever have to end up needing intensive care type of care is incredibly low. And what I can tell you is that pretty much every single child that gets this recovers fully without really any sequelae or problems afterwards at all. What are the symptoms parents and caregivers should look out for? Fever for a couple days. Uh, generally, we're seeing that these fevers are pretty high, or 102, 103 or higher. Uh, and then sometimes uh, children, depending on their age, are gonna develop a rash. They might develop some swelling of their hands or feet. They might develop red eyes. Uh, and so, and a, another common thing that we're seeing, which is a super vague, but we're, we're hearing a lot of, is that people are complaining of high fevers, diarrhea and abdominal pain with this as well and what happens is that these children develop these and or, or even even uh, like adolescents teenagers are developing these uh these symptoms where they have these high fevers and then um they uh they kind of go into shock uh, their body goes into shock for a brief period of time and that's all treated by our doctors in the hospital and again m most of these kids when they're picked up which they pretty much all are picked up are recovering without a problem so what can parents do if they think, you know, oh my gosh, I'm looking at the You're symptoms, right. my child might have MISC. What, what's the first Absolutely. thing they should do? The, call their doctor. And, and the one thing I'll tell you is uh, come in to see us too. Uh, PD Express down at uh, Robert B. Green with University Health System now has two options. We actually have the ability to do telemedicine visits where we can actually do a video visit with you and your child or with with a parent and their child in the home we can talk through the symptoms and take a look at the child with your child with you as uh, uh as we're doing the visit and we can we can discuss the options at that point if it's one of these situations where we feel like you know we might need to look further into this very rare misc uh, uh 
um, issue, then we'll have you come into our clinic where we can take a closer look and do some blood tests if we need to. And it's okay to go to the ER right now. What, yes. what safety precautions are in place for folks who come in? Well, we're, we're taking a lot of precautions, both in the ER and the urgent care right now. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we're, 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 we're washing our hands a lot. I know it sounds incredibly basic, but it's one of the most important tenets of trying to prevent uh, disease spread is washing our hands. So, of course, we're doing that normally. But in addition to that, we're uh, also all, all health care providers, nurses are wearing masks at all encounters. We're wearing eye protection. And then in certain situations when we need it, we're wearing additional PPE or personal protective equipment is necessary. When people come to the emergency room, uh, you know, we recommend the same thing that you're hearing from the city and state. Wear a mask, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, try to stay away from uh, other people and families, you know, at least six feet as far as you can or as far as you can the social distance as much as possible when you come in. For more information, just call 210-358-KIDS. That's 210-358-5437. Or visit their website, universityhealthsystem.com slash SA Live. Dr. Sanders, once again, thank you so much and stay safe. Thank you, ma'am. You too. Still ahead on SA Live, church bells are ringing and we'll tell you what local venues are doing during this unusual wedding season. Well, it's summertime and the living is easy. Maybe too easy for the kids. Are they driving you up the wall right now? Coming up next, we have a solution to save your sanity. With summertime here and kids needing to keep busy, there are online resources for families to both entertain and educate while giving kids the screen time they really want. Parenting expert Kathleen Tomes joins us to help out. Hey there, Kathleen. <laughs> hey, Fiona. Great to see you again. Hey, so you are going to help parents and kids avoid the summer slide, right? Exactly. Truly, the summer slide where the brain starts going if you don't do some uh, online education. <laughs> All right, so what are some websites that can help? Yeah, so Brilliant Parenting does research across the nation of what are the top resources for parents. So a couple of them we have to share today. The first one is by Hand to Mind, and they developed a program called Teach at Home. And it is a, the leader in products for both homeschool and over the last 50 years, they've created the virtual Teach at Home platform, and it helps parents educate the children at home. It was created by educators and real teachers. It's lessons K through five, and the best thing about it is they're all designed so the kids can be educated without the parents having to be actively involved, which is key because the parents are still having to work while their kids are at home. What about a site that can help spur imagination? Yeah, exactly. So the next one, oh, I love it that you asked about imagination because that's where it all begins. Schleich, they have a fun at home program. Schleich's fun at home program, it's full of ideas for hours of entertainment. It has with animals from all walks of life and it features imaginative play activities with like story starters, games, do it yourself, you know, activities and coloring sheets. It's perfect for all ages. And Schleich is also currently running their Power of Imagination photo contest, which encourages kids to get creative and submit their photos. Now, to this day, my mom still wonders why I didn't go become a doctor or a lawyer or something. But there's even one to ins inspire kids about the field of medicine, right? <laughs> Yeah, and you know what? If little medical school had been around when you were growing up, you probably would have had a whole different career. But little medical school, it's designed to inspire kids and educate them about the whole field of medicine. So online, they have free online classes every Thursday that focuses on different careers within the medical industry that are also helping for kids to train them on how to fight COVID-19. It changes kids' lives with littlemedicalschool.com. And what about for the kids that love to tinker, that love to build? Oh, let's say, I mean, you know, if you're not going in the medical profession, you're probably going in the engineering profession. eBlocks is an e-learning site for kids who love to build. So eBlocks takes building and STEM to a whole new level. And they give you all these different like light up components and building blocks, circuits, motions. Absolutely brilliant. From brilliant parenting expert, <laughs> Kathleen Tomes. Thank you so much. Where can folks go for more information? Brilliant parenting on Instagram. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kathleen. We appreciate your time and stay safe. Coming up next, we crack open the truth about the health benefits of a certain nut you may know. <laughs> next up, we share some helpful tips on this year's wedding season.
Welcome back, everyone. Well, many area event venues are having to, of course, redo all their ceremony packages. Yes, and as we all know, anyone looking to tie the knot over the past two months had to postpone or lose out on something that took a lot of planning. Yep. Today, our Jen Tobias Trusky shares how some venues are getting really creative to accommodate smaller parties, and one local company shares some helpful tips to throw your own backyard gathering. Take a look. Saying I do has been put on hold, but now that venues are opening up, that means more couples are reconsidering their celebration and venues are rolling with the changes. The celebrations don't have to end the very, very special time for these um, couples and we're here to help them celebrate in any way that we can. So obviously so many people had to put the weddings on hold and Don Street, you guys have a really great package right now. Um, I'm sure you were struggling through this, but also these couples who had these big plans. So what are you guys doing right now to help them out? We have had weddings that were on the books that were larger numbers for right now, you know, three, 400 people weddings. So um, for the promotion at River Rock, um, for $5,000 for up to 50 guests, that includes the venue itself, which has a ceremony space. It includes the tables and chairs and linens. Um, it includes chairs for ceremony with social distancing protocol taken into consideration. While some couples are holding off altogether, another venue in town, Scenic Springs, is offering a cottage overnight experience where your small wedding party can stay the night and your whole family can get together for a backyard themed wedding on their grounds, spaced out, of course, with social distancing in mind. And if you're looking to skip a venue altogether, we have some help today from Mitzi Gutierrez, lead planner at Bride on a Budget Event Planners in San Antonio. She went from biomedical engineering to wedding planning. Today, she shares some tips for throwing your own backyard wedding. Um, usually with our backyard weddings at this time, couples are inviting um, parents, siblings, literally just immediate family, maybe a friend or two. But really the rule is to try and keep it at 10 guests or less. Um, my second suggestion for all backyard weddings is it doesn't necessarily have to be at your own backyard. Um, some of the solutions that our couples have been finding is Airbnbs, um, which are currently, you know, being rented out at this time. Um, you know, Airbnbs, beautiful places in the Hill Country, in Bromples, in Wimberley, Spring Branch. Um, and they are very affordable because you're really only renting them out for one day. But there's so many um, beautiful options for decor at places like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Walmart. Walmart, these stores are already open. So don't feel like, oh, you know, you have to hire a florist and all that because it's going to be something so intimate that going to these, you know, stores is super, super great. And um, we have had some of our couples hire a, a guitarist, you know, a, a cello player, a violin player, a player. I mean, it can still be beautiful and intimate and like a real ceremony. Um, even though it is in your backyard. Lastly, um, as far as backyard weddings go, um, lots of like photo and video companies that, you know, traditionally do like wedding videography and photography in San Antonio. Um, they're also offering um, like live streaming services, but with a professional like equipment. So from an intimate guest list to live streaming so everybody can feel like they're included, one thing's for sure, she says, be patient. There is light at the end of the tunnel. For Rasay Live, I'm Jen Tobias Strusky. That must really be tough for those. A, a couple of folks that I know had to postpone their weddings. And uh, Well, for more on these venues and event planners, head over to SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right, coming up next, we get cracking on the benefits to your health with the help of one particular nut. secret that eating the right foods can help your body function better, help you feel better, and pistachios can give your body a boost of nutrients. Joining us now to tell us why we need to just go nuts is nutrition consultant and author, Dr. Mike Roussel. Hey there. Hey, how you doing today? 
Hey, before we get into all the benefits, tell us why pistachios are the complete protein. So there's some really new, interesting research showing that pistachios are considered a complete protein for individuals five years and older. And what this means is that they contain all nine essential amino acids. Now, amino acids are the building blocks of protein. And your body can make some of them, but others it needs to get from the foods we eat. Those are the essential amino acids. So this new research shows us that pistachios join the likes of foods like meats, fish, dairy, and eggs as complete protein sources but they grow on trees. So if you're a vegetarian or follow a vegan diet, or you're just looking for a plant-based snack with protein, pistachios can be a great option. So you've mentioned a few of the benefits. What are even more benefits of pistachios? So with pistachios, if you lead an active lifestyle, they're also a great thing to have with you. Because of this complete protein, they can be used to refuel and repair muscle after exercise, the antioxidants, B vitamins, healthy fats, and potassium can help refuel and replenish your energy stores and your electrolytes after you exercise as well. There are some unique antioxidants in pistachios called lutein and zeaxanthin, and they actually concentrate in your eye to promote eye health and protect from UV damage. Now, one serving of pistachios contains 49 nuts, which is more than any other nut, and that amount contains as much protein as an egg. So should you just grab a handful every morning and go? What are some easy ways to incorporate them into your daily routine? So like you just mentioned, grabbing a handful and snacking on them is, is a great way. One serving only contains 160 calories, so it's a calorie conscious snack as well. But you can incorporate them in things like recipes for protein bars or trail mix or mixing them in with yogurt and uh, oatmeal. Those are two ways that we use it at our house as a topping on salad. There's really a variety of ways other than just shelling them and eating them that you can incorporate pistachios in your diet. And as with anything, you don't want to have too much, right? Right, but with pistachios, it's actually difficult because they have 49 nuts per serving and you have to go through that process of shelling them to eat. Kind of the leftover shells give you a good visualization of, of how much you've eaten. So it's really hard to overeat them. The research shows that if you eat more, so say three servings of pistachios a day, it actually has an even greater benefit on heart health. And there was a study done about a year ago in France where people added 250 extra calories to their diet from pistachios and they experienced no weight gain during the course of the study. So it's actually hard to overeat pistachios. I'm already writing it down on my grocery list right now. <laughs> Tell us where folks can go for more information. <laughs> That's great. So if you go to AmericanPistachios.org, lots of great recipes, snack ideas, and even more information about the complete protein research and all the other health benefits of pistachios. Uh, nutrition consultant and author, Dr. Mike Roussel, thank you so much and stay safe. Thanks, you too. Tomorrow on SA Live, make them once and eat them for days. A mini chef is making sure your family eats well with meatballs three ways with three different kinds of meat. Plus, family spots are opening back up. We check out Bowl and Barrel to see what's new. That and more tomorrow at 1 on SA Live. All right, earlier we asked you, are you a fan of sweet treats or do you prefer salty treats? Ooh, I've got to go with this one. We've seen that A&W root beer. There's nothing like that. Ooh, got to love a cool root beer float on a hot day. Yep. That's some good stuff. Oh, yeah, nothing beats a root beer float, right? And now, do you like it just classic? Do you like anything else in it? No, just, just root beer. Just root beer. And then, and then you can do 7-Up in that or Coke, a Coke float like that, too. But A&W root beer, I'm, it, that's or one the A&W cream soda. Oh, that's yes, right. Oh. Hi, we're back. We're getting carried away here just a little bit. So, but my favorite little, you uh -huh. know, as I mentioned off the top, right. a little bit of ice cream mm -hmm. and then some uh, dry roasted little salty peanuts on top. So or it like is that, sea that's salt sweet. caramel. The combination. We're fans of the combination. Yeah. But if we had to pick, I go sweet. Mm -hmm. Ice cream or brownie? What would you pick? Ice cream. I like ice cream on brownie. I would. I don't you know. Said pick. But a warm brownie, warm chocolate. That's we're getting carried away here. And I'm getting away as of right now. <laughs>
<laughs> hey, tomorrow we've got a great meatball recipe. Meatballs you make once, three different types of meat, and then you can just sock them away and have them all the time, which is another great meal. That sounds really good for dinner tonight because I was just texting my wife saying, what are we going to do for dinner tonight? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> you get all the ideas on this show. <laughs> How many times do you do that? So. And, of course, places are opening back up, so we went to go check out Bowl and Barrel and found out what you need to know before you head up there if you want to go there and enjoy a fun night with your family. Ah. Okay. Hey, we want to give a quick shout out, of course, to all the kids graduating. Of course, there are a lot of in-person, you know, commencement ceremonies that are finally going on. So this year, we put together a little montage of some of the 2020 graduates.